And three of the Browns beat reporters in attendance for yesterday's Browns win. Join us now, Mary Kay Cabot of Cleveland.com, Tony Grossi of The Land on Demand.com on 850 ESPN, Cleveland, and Jason Lloyd of The Atlantic. It is so nice to have all three of you here, as I've said before, unfortunately, under these circumstances, but we appreciate you coming in and sharing your memories. You were all at the game yesterday. We talk about this divine intervention. Mary Kay, what do you think? Was Jimmy's spirit certainly felt there? Oh, absolutely. When Kyle Hamilton dropped the interception, you absolutely know that Jimmy had a hand on that. He was just knocking that ball out of Kyle Hamilton's hands. There's no question about it. And at the end of the game, I, all I could think of was the call that Jimmy would have made. Yeah. Because I listened to every single one of those games that he ever called uh, throughout all of these years, and I still miss it. That voice will always be in my ear. Jason, so many things yesterday happened, did not happen that you thought would normally happen. The doink field goal yeah. <laughs> that went through the, the receiver for the Ravens, who normally is very sure-handed, whose the ball bounces off yeah. of, <laughs> of his face mask. Yeah, Rashad Bateman. I, I said Jimmy must have shoved the sun over just six inches and got it right in his <laughs> eyes. Justin Tucker missed a field goal. How often does that happen? I said Jimmy kicked his plant foot because Justin was looking down at the ground after he missed it. Like, how did I how did I slip? I'm like, you didn't slip, buddy. Jimmy just pulled your shoe out from under you. <laughs> Tony, as you're watching that game yesterday, what were you thinking? Well, it was a beautiful place to be the day after Jimmy passed. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was his place of work on Sundays, and it turned out to be a, a gorgeous weather day. Uh, the, the, the Browns never played better this mm -hmm. year. And uh, th what the Browns did in the pregame and, and during the game and, and living up to the moment was just special. And it, 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 it was an emotional day, but it was beautiful. I'm going to come back to you in just a second about this, but you two, of course, appeared with Jimmy on The Point After, which was on the 7 o'clock newscast, the day after, hopefully, <laughs> a Browns victory. It looked every time like you were just having a blast with him. <laughs> Is that a fair assessment? Yes, and the funny thing about it is Jimmy could have you laughing so hard right before the camera goes on and you're on set and you're on the air and then you had to, like, stop laughing. And <laughs> he was always great at that. He's such a professional. And I would be trying my best not to be laughing so hard on camera. So that was always a challenge. I would always try and get here early. Obviously, we'd yeah. do the 7. We'd get the top. I'd try and get here 635 right when you guys went off. Mm -hmm. And we'd hold court back there in the corner. And a lot of people don't realize Jimmy was a, still a huge Boston sports fan. Right. Like he hit it well, but he was a big Celtics fan. And I, in my previous life, I covered the NBA for almost 10 years. So he would always ask me. He would always come in close and go, hey, let me ask you. And then that's when you knew the good stuff was coming. Hey, 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 hey let me ask you. <laughs> and he'd say, hey, let me ask, what, do you, what do you think about the, the new Celtics coach? And when they won the championship, obviously, we had a moment in, at the Greenbrier. And I said, you got one. You yeah. finally got one. <laughs> and just, just telling Brown stories back right. there. When they do something, the, when the Browns could do some sort of nonsense, he would yeah. come in and go, ah! Oh! <laughs> that was so Jimmy. Hey, let me, let me ask you something. Hey, you, didn't, ask you. you didn't know where he was going there. <laughs> Tony, you were the OG in terms of the point after. <laughs> after the program. original point after. The original yeah. Point, yeah. point after. And you two became very close. I can remember sitting back there, a big Brown story would break, and he would always say, I got to call Tony. <laughs> what made you guys so close? Um, I think we shared the same desire to see this Browns thing through and see them win. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I always said I wanted the, my name to be on a story of them playing in the Super Bowl. And Jimmy wanted to be the voice of the Browns in a Super Bowl game. And when you're so passionate about that, uh, and there were so many lows covering this expansion team, I think, I think we shared an understanding you know, of just how tough it is to get through this era, yeah. knowing both of our careers were running short, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, we, uh, my favorite times were on the road with him at restaurants on Saturday evening or uh, after games. And, and I felt this last night after this beautiful day I talked about. I'm leaving the, leaving the stadium about 8 o'clock at night. I get in my car and I hit my phone to call Jimmy Donovan mm -hmm. because that was my habit of the last couple of years. Yeah. And uh, that's when it really felt that I missed them the most that day. But uh, we had so many great. He loves sports yeah. media, not mm -hmm. just sports. Mm -hmm. And he, he knew everybody. Yeah, he loved to talk about it. He loved the business. He was a student of this business. Mm -hmm. yep. Honey Grossi, thank you. Thanks Mary for Kay. having me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go behind Mary Kay <laughs> here and shake your hand. Thank you. Thank you both. And we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.